watching for a friend where I watch movies and shows because I love them and let you know whether it's worth watching or not. If you're new here, thank you so much for choosing me. I hope you stay till the end of this video and I hope you enjoy it. And for those of you who are returning, thank you so much for the support. I really, really appreciate it. So today I'm going to be reviewing Net the new Netflix series Black AF by Kenya Barris. He signed a huge deal last year with Netflix, which started out with the sketch comedy show Astronomy Club, which is currently streaming on Netflix now. And this is the second Phil or this is the second series that he's releasing from that deal since leaving ABC uh, where he penned the shows Blackish, Mixedish, and Grownish. So he left ABC, he created those shows, but now he is creating shows for Netflix. So similar to Blackish, um, Grownish, and Mixedish, this series, uh, Black AF, is loosely based on Kenya's life. And he actually plays himself in this series. And this one is probably the closest to his current lifestyle. So it's following he and his family, um, his wife and their six children uh, in their now very, very wealthy lifestyle as he has become a successful writer. So I want to talk about Kenya playing himself first. He plays an over-the-top version of himself in this comedy style of Curb Your Enthusiasm, which is a dry, sarcastic, um, improv style of comedy. So my initial reaction to the series is that he's been telling these stories for years on Blackish. So now retelling these stories uh, on this particular series where he's playing himself, it doesn't feel as fresh. It feels, it definitely feels recycled. And it feels like he's just taking Blackish into a more raw, uncut direction. Now, there was some controversy with Kenya leaving ABC. He left ABC because they wouldn't give him creative freedom to really uh, go for some more edgy episodes that were a little bit more politically charged than what the ABC audience was used to, if you know what I mean. And so he decided to leave in 2018. And in all honesty, this series feels like a clapback, right? Like it feels like he's like, oh, well, ABC, you didn't want me to be Ron Uncut there. So now I get to be Ron Uncut on Netflix. So it feels like a clapback to me and it feels more like a passion project than anything. He's like, oh, now I get to tell these stories the way that I wanted to tell them. Um, I get to swear. I get to take a firmer stance on a lot of issues. Um, and I think that that's something that ABC wasn't going to allow him to do. So it feels like a clapback and it feels like a personal thing that he, it per feels like a personal message that he's trying to send. Now, I've been really intentional about not watching reviews around this series. I wanted to make sure that I'm forming my own opinion. I want to make sure that I'm being fair and objective. Now I feel that I've formed my absolute opinion about this series. And I don't think we should cancel it yet. I don't think we need to cancel Kenya over this. I don't think that, you know, this series is 100% bad. It has some issues <laughs> um, and it ain't perfect, but I do think it has some potential, especially if they get a second season. I think there's a lot that they could do to improve on this. And I actually think he's onto something here. Now, first off, I want to say I am not a fan of Kenya's acting, not saying that he can't get any better, but in the, he actually almost lost me completely in the first episode. I found the first episode very, very difficult to get through. I was like, I gotta turn this off. I have to turn it off. And it's because, um, so yes, he isn't an experienced actor. So, you know, he's, he's, uh, very, very new to being in front of the camera. He definitely is much more talented uh, in his writing and in his filmmaking. But um, he kept going into this weird Napoleon Dynamite demeanor, mannerisms, and I was not feeling it. Character was really, really difficult to connect with. Um, and in that first episode, he was just so whiny that I had a very, very difficult time getting past it. Since when do you care what people think about us when they look at us? I don't care. I mean, I, I do care, but I don't want to care. But I have to care. You know what I'm saying? Dude. 
I know I sound crazy, but I'm not, man. I highly recommend, if you can't get through that episode, skipping to episode five first, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and um, watching that one first, just because it wasn't until episode five that I actually connected with his character. He was learning on the job, and he did get better the later in the series that we got. Kenya also received a lot of flack around the casting choices in this series. So um, initially there was a ton of, you know, outcry or a ton of controversy around the fact that his entire family was light skin, right? Now his response to that was like, hey, these people, this is what my family looks like. It would be dishonest for me to portray them any other way, which is, that response is a little bit of, a, it's a weird response. Like it's TV, you could do whatever you want. So I do agree with him. I think if they're trying to make this look like his actual family, they did a good job of casting. So I actually think, think they did a really good job casting the family because the family that he has on screen absolutely reflects the family that he has off screen. And for the outside of his family, the cast was still very light skin. It definitely seemed like you had to pass the paper bag test in order to be cast on this seat on this series so even outside of his family i do think it lacked some representation of the full gambit that you know a beautiful blackness there is um but i also don't think that's necessarily his sole responsibility um there is a very small you know black community in hollywood and we are underrepresented even in the writer's room. So but I think since he's only talking about his family, we can't really, you know, say, oh, you don't represent anybody. He's like, I'm representing eight people. <laughs> That's all I'm representing. And I think that if he calls that out a little bit more specifically, rather than trying to be like, well, I need to be honest and I can't do it any other way. Just be like, this is what my family looks like. And I'm telling one story for four, for four separate uh you know series that's all you got to say now the larger issue that i see <laughs> um with this particular series is that it was just inappropriately titled so black af really doesn't tell us what this series is about and as you start getting into the series you realize it isn't about them being black at all. It's not about them trying to fit in anywhere. They are absolutely assimilated into white culture. They don't stick out like sore thumbs. They're not having a hard time trying to fit in. Kenya grapples with blackness and things like that throughout the series, but the focus isn't them being black. The focus is the fact that they went from being an upper middle class family to now being like obscenely rich. So I was talking to my sister about this and she was like, it probably should have just been named like Rich AF or Hollywood AF. And that would have been more indicative of what the series was about. So I do want to talk about Rashida Jones. I really like her in this series. She's the most veteran actor in the main cast. So, you know, which is him, his children and his like assistant. I've seen like some things on social media and come across and you know, they're like, oh, now Rashida Jones wants to, you know, play a black character. And I think I don't I'm not a fan of trying to take away her blackness like that. I think that she is white passing. So she gets cast in these white passing or completely white roles. But what we're not going to do is take away the fact that she's Quincy Jones daughter. We're not going to take away the fact that her sister was at Tupac's bedside when he passed away. Like we're not going to act like this woman don't have fully black siblings. She has had a black experience growing up. I don't know that she's ever tried to deny her black side. Um, as far as you know, I've been watching her in movies and shows for years. She's never been like, oh yeah, I'm white. She's never denied that she's biracial. In this series, she is playing a wealthy biracial woman, which is exactly what she is in, in actual life. So like, why are we even having this conversation? Like she's playing herself. 
she has embraced being biracial um, in everything that I know of her. So I think that that's like a, a non-factor. It's a non-conversation. She's playing the role that she's meant for. You know, like this is what she's been working for her whole life. <laughs> and I'm glad that they're finally addressing that she's biracial. I also really appreciate that they have her playing, being a mom. So she is, you know, she does have a young looking face. And, but the woman's over 40. And she's always playing somebody's girlfriend. Like she's never playing a wife. She's never playing a mother. So I like that they are letting her play a biracial mother. I mean, that's a, that's what she is. She's a biracial mother. Um, so I don't understand where the issues came with her playing this part. I also love that they kept referencing her being in this like hip hop group <laughs> and that was really important to her because I feel like the the later you get into like your 30s and your 40s being able to dance is like really important to you <laughs> maybe that's just me I don't know but the fact that they kept like cutting to her at her dance class or her making excuses like oh I can't I can't miss my dance class I was like that is such a thing when you're like in your 30s and 40s if you still got it you know like <laughs> It makes so, it, it, it's like, it is a type of currency, right? Like, oh, look, look, I can still, oh, I can still battle these little kids. Look at me. <laughs> so I love that they brought that in. I was like, oh, that is actually, that is absolutely the 30 and 40 year old experience right there. You've got to, like, if you can't dance, you don't know what to do with yourself. It, it's very important to me. <laughs> okay. Now, that was kind of like talking about the characters. When I think of the series as a whole, it was all over the place. When I look back at what I think he was trying to say is that, you know, I think the message was like, oh, they are these um, two wealthy parents you know, who have gone from being kind of upper middle class to being like so rich that they don't know what to do with themselves. And they're kind of grappling with raising their kids like they were raised or embracing the fact that now their kids don't have to worry about money. They could spend like there's no tomorrow. They have these um, connections now so they can get their kids into top schools. Um, they could spend money for no good reason at all and get like different nannies and things like that. So I think that's what the message was. They're trying to be these really progressive parents that, um, you know, like no subject is taboo with them. They like to talk to their kids like they're adults. So like, yeah, like we're the cool parents. Like we curse at each other. We curse at our kids. We talk about things like this. So I, I get I, that's the only message that I really got from that. But again, that has nothing to do with being black. Um, any race that went from, you know, one tax bracket to, you know, an extreme tax bracket would have those same struggles. So they have this progressive relationship and then their household was less about being nurturing and more of this kind of lawless independent vibe that they were trying to, to foster. So I, I think that's the message that they were trying to send but I'm not sure. But you know what? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. <laughs> was the message clear to you? Let me know what you think the message he was trying to send because I, that's, when I look back, that's the only clear through line I see. But let me know what you think about that too. So I think where the writing failed for me is that the characters, most of them were one dimensional, right? So even in their, their relationships weren't deep personal relationships and and they oftentimes used sarcasm in place of affection, which was a little, you know, it felt like the, the family was disjointed to me. I was actually really surprised when they had a tender moment or when they were rooting for each other because they were so sarcastic with each other. Now, Kenya's character to me was very one dimensional. Um, it was very difficult to understand what his motivation was. I guess at some times he felt underappreciated, but he was also very egotistical and spoke down on his wife and his children quite a bit. So I wasn't quite sure. I was like, I don't even 
picture him as a dad or as a husband in real life. So it was very difficult to understand, you know, his actual psyche. And it was the same with the kids. Like there, there was a lot of them, but um, I still feel like we've seen plenty of series with a lot of kids and you end up connecting with those kids. And here I felt like they kind of wasted the cast talent because they were all, you know, none of the characters were well developed. The one character that was developed was Rashida Jones, but again, she's an executive producer, so I think she has some say in the writing, and also she's a veteran actor, so she really knows how to bring characters to life. If they're going to do another season, they really have got to work on Kenya's character, and they really got to work on those kids' character, because I came out, I'm like, I don't even know what each of them, they were archetypes, they weren't really characters, you know? And also, I feel like they did the older daughter really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like she was completely unnecessary in this series. They could have taken her out and nothing would have changed. And I'm not, a, I hate when there are unnecessary characters in there. So I think that if they cleaned up Kenya's vision and gave us a little bit more of a clear message and made it a little bit more focused and then developed Kenya's own character and the kids, I think this could actually be a really great series. So now I'll talk about what I really liked about the series and some things that really worked for me. Now my favorite episode was episode five where Kenya is invited to be on the panel discussing a film that everyone around him loves and he hated. I love the scene where he, his wife, and his daughter were standing outside of Roscoe's and he and his daughter are running down a list of why this movie isn't the groundbreaking masterpiece that everyone is making it out to be. I related to this scene so much because... I do this all the time. <laughs> I'm like, so we just gonna look past the fact that us doesn't make sense. <laughs> like I love Lupita as much as the next person, but Jordan Peele, you're not about to make all these rules and then paint yourself into a corner and break them to get out of that corner. <laughs> so I have opinions. That's a whole other video. I completely digress, but Again, I, I, I feel this on a soul level <laughs> because I'm like, no, there is no way you are going to make us make sense to me. <laughs> I love what he tried to do with it, but he could do better. He can and he should and we should hold him to that. So um, <laughs> throughout the episode, he, you know, Kenya is like, oh man, he like consults other writers, which I love that scene as well. He brought a bunch of other, you know, relevant writer writers in Hollywood right now into a conference call and he's talking to them about like how they should hold each other accountable, how they should be pushing each other to be better writers. Come to our projects as black people with the same critical eye that we can have when we're looking at white films and white series and things. So I think that that message, um, I actually, this whole, you know, episode had a very clear message. He executed it really well. He did it. It was extremely entertaining. Um, and I, I wish that the entire series was written like this episode. Because, and so he actually does end up being truthful when he's on the panel and this filmmaker's up there and the crowd turns on him. So to me, I was like, oh yep, that's cancel culture. Like <laughs> you can't actually say what you want to say. And then he like uh, brought it to a group of his white writers in his writers, writer's room. And the, the white people were afraid to tell him that they didn't like the movie. They're like, oh, you know, I have to say that I like it because if I say it, I don't like it, then I'm gonna be deemed like racist. Um, and they were like, so, I'm just gonna pretend like it's a great movie even though it was crappy <laughs> and so it was very very interesting um and he even brought in Tyler Perry on this episode and I, I was like this is a great use of Tyler Perry because you know he is known for having kind of tropey black films and tv shows and he gets a lot of flack for it uh but he doesn't change like he's not trying to please people he knows his audience and he's going to continue to do stuff specific for his audience and so it was good to get Tyler Perry's take on this. 
Another thing that I would say is that Tyler is a veteran actor. He's a veteran stage actor and a screen actor. So he really outshined Kenya for me in this, but he was definitely a breath of fresh air in this episode. And I loved how they incorporated Tyler Perry. Also, side note, um, this episode had one of my absolute favorite scenes in it. Um, and it was a scene where Kenya's cousin Harold, who was an ex-gangster, is trying to pitch a movie. <laughs> He's trying to pitch this movie to him. Basically, the premise that he is pitching to, Ken to Kenya is that he, it's a, it's a movie about a male gangster who poses as a as a woman to infiltrate a rival gang and it's supposed to be a comedy he compared it to Joanna man and then went on to make some very valid points of how Joanna man uh, would be or should be a classic <laughs> like Miss Doubtfire, Tootsie, and Some Like It Hot, but it was a black film, so it's not considered a classic. But had it been a white film, it probably would have been considered a classic like Miss Doubtfire or something like that. So I loved that scene. So I do want to keep this review fairly brief. So outside of that, outside of all of this, the series had some very entertaining moments that I thought were funny and I do hope that they get a second season. So I think it's important that they have a diverse writer's room, not a, you know, a white writer's room, a white writer's room or a black writer's room. A diverse writer's room is what we need up in here, right? <laughs> so I hope that they take that criticism that they're getting, take it to the next level, keep it fresh, Go for some new stories, stories that we haven't already seen on black, on blackish, mixedish, and grownish. Like this is a totally new series. Let's let's make it fresh. Let's do some stuff that we haven't seen yet. I also think that they have some work to do on Kenya's character and his acting. All right, so that is it for my review. There's tons and tons more to unpack. Um, so let's go on and do that in the comment section. Let's light it up down there. All that I ask is that you be respectful and loving toward one another when we're talking about this. I have seen social media blow up a little bit on this. So I know that people, you know, are on opposing sides. So if we, we do get into um, that comment section, just be respectful and know that it's okay for somebody to have a different perspective than you. All right. Well, that is it for my review. I really appreciate you staying to the end. I hope you come back. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.